This is Bob Capetta from the College of the Florida Keys, and this lesson is on evaluating and graphing functions. Just a quick reminder on what is a function. A set of points must pass the vertical line test in order to be a function. What does that mean? We can look at a couple examples. Something like this. Any vertical line hits it in at most one point that this is a function. The vertical line cuts anything in at most one point. This is not a function because the vertical line cuts it in two points. Each input must have only one output. And we're going to look at outputs for various functions in this lesson. So let's take a look at a relatively straightforward one. Let's take a look at f of x equals 2x minus 1. We're going to plug in various values for x. How about f of 0 is 2 times 0 minus 1 is 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. f of 1, plug the 1 in parentheses. 2 times 1 minus 1. 2 minus 1 equals 1. f of 2, 2 times 2 minus 1. 4 minus 1, which is 3. How about some negative values? f of negative 1, 2 times negative 1 minus 1, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. f of negative 2, 2 times negative 2 minus 1, which is negative 4 minus 1, which is negative 5. So we have all of these points. Can we graph them? Can we get some kind of a decent graph? Uh, that represents these. Well, let's take a look. Our point's input is 0. Output is negative 1. So this is x, f of x, sort of like an xy table. Input is 0. Output is negative 1. Input is 1. Output is 1. Input is 2. Output is 3. Input is negative 1. Output is negative 3. Input is negative 2. Output is negative 5. So we can see what that looks like. We'll go uh, 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2 in the x. In the y direction, we need to go up to 3, 1, 2, 3, and down to 5, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we'll go ahead and plot these points as best we can. 0 on x is negative 1 on y here. 1 on x is 1 on y there. 2 on x is 3 on y here. Negative 1, negative 3, and negative 2, negative 5. And you will notice these points all lie on a straight line. So connect them. And draw arrows at the end. And that's how we graph the function f of x is 2x minus 1. But, you know, you can plug other things into that function other than simply numbers to see how it's going to be graphed. For example, I could say f of x equals 2x minus 1. And I want to know I want to know what is f of c plus 5. What you do then is you replace c plus 5 with x in parentheses. 2 times parentheses, c plus 5 minus 1. And then do our distributive property. 2 times c is 2c, plus 2 times 5 is 10 minus 1, which is 2c plus 9. So let's take a look at a, another sort of function. Let's take a look at f of x is x squared minus 2x minus 4. 
And before I try to graph that and plug a bunch of points, let's plug C plus five in here and see how that behaves. What would F of C plus five be for this function? We're gonna replace each X in parentheses with C plus five. That will be C plus five squared minus two times C plus five minus four. We wanna see how that's going to behave. Now, first off, we have C plus five squared, which means C plus five times C plus five. C times C is C squared plus C times five is five C plus five times C is five C plus five times five is 25. Adding all those together, we get C squared plus 10 C plus 25 as C plus five squared is C squared plus 10 C plus 25. Now I've got minus two here. I might wanna make that plus negative two. Make that plus negative two to distribute negative two times C is negative two C plus negative two times five is negative 10 and then we'll add plus negative four here. So let's simplify this algebra. Where do we go? F of C plus five equals C squared plus 10 C plus 25 plus negative two C plus negative 10 plus negative four. So F of C plus five collecting like, like terms. C squared is the only square term, term I have. 10 C here minus two C here would be eight C. And our numbers 25 minus 10 is 15 minus four is 11. So that's our process. I wanted to get f of c plus 5. I replaced the x in each case with c plus 5 in parentheses. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to graph this. I'd like to figure out some way to graph f of x is x squared minus 2x minus 4. So I'm going to pick some values for x, evaluate them, and then plot them. f of x is x squared minus 2x minus 4. How about 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2. And we've got x, and we have f of x. And our strategy is going to be to plug these x values in to that with in parentheses. So f parentheses 0 is 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 4, which is 0 minus 0 minus 4, which is negative 4. So f of 0 is negative 4. Next up, f of 1, plug 1 in parentheses, 1 squared minus two times one minus four, one minus two minus four. So it's one plus negative two plus negative four, which is one plus negative six, which is negative five. Next we'll plug in two. We want to find out what F of two is. What is F of two? F of two is parentheses two squared minus two times two minus four f of 2 is 4 minus 4 minus 4, 4 plus negative 4 plus negative 4 gives me negative 4. Let's plug in f of 3 in parentheses. 3 squared minus 2 times 3 minus 4, 9 minus 6 minus 4. 9 plus negative 6 plus negative 4, 9 plus negative 10, negative 1. Now let's go ahead and plug in negative 1. So we'll plug that in next and see what we get. Plugging in negative 1, same process. So f of x is x squared minus 2x minus 4. Plugging negative 1 in. We'll take f of negative 1 is negative 1 squared minus 2 t's. Negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1 plus negative 2 times negative 1 minus 4 plus negative 4. 
one plus negative two times negative one is positive two plus negative four. That's three plus negative four, which is negative one. And we'll do one more of these before we try to graph. We'll plug in f of negative two. What is f of negative two? That is negative two squared minus two times negative two minus four. Negative two times negative two is positive four minus two plus negative two times negative two plus negative four. Four plus four plus negative four. Eight plus negative four is four. So we have a whole bunch of points that we want to graph here. The point zero, negative four, the point one, negative five, the point two, negative four, the point three, negative one, the point negative one, negative one, the point negative two, four. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll pull up some graph paper here and try to do that analysis. So what do we have? We have the x-axis is here, the y-axis here, x is zero, y is negative four. Down here, x is one, y is negative five here. X is two, y is negative four here. X is three, y is negative one here. X is negative one, y is negative, whoops, negative one, negative one, that looks good. Uh, X is negative two, y is four. And you'll notice what we have here, it looks like it's going to be a parabola of some sort. I'd like to get this next value, one, two, three, four. If I plug in a four for X, what do I get for F of X? Just to see if it matches up there. So F of four would be four squared minus two times four minus four. 16, two times four, 16 minus eight minus four. 16 minus eight is eight minus four is four indeed. The other point I get here is four, four. So that'll kind of help me out here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And those are the values that we have for this function. Let's connect them up as best we can. Nice and round at the bottom. And we have arrows here that extends out beyond that direction. And that's what the graph of that function would look like. And let's go ahead and do one more graphing problem. So evaluating and graphing of a function. This time I'm going to go with the absolute value function. So let's take a look at g of x equals the absolute value of x plus three. So I need to pick good values so that I can make this work. So I'm gonna pick negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, and one. So this is x and we wanna evaluate g of x to see what that function looks like. So g of negative five is absolute value of negative five plus three, which is absolute value of negative two, which is positive two. G of negative four is absolute value of negative four plus three, which is absolute value of negative one, which is positive one. G of negative three is absolute value of negative three plus three, which is absolute value of zero, which is zero. G of negative two is absolute value negative two plus three, which is absolute value of one, which is one. G of negative one is absolute value negative one plus three. Negative one plus three is two absolute value of two, which is two. Absolute value of G of zero or G of zero is absolute value of zero plus three, which is absolute three, which is three. I'm running out of room to show the work, but I can do this one mentally. One plus three is four, absolute four is four. So I have all of those points Negative five, two, negative four, one, negative three, zero, negative two, one, negative one, two, zero, three, one, four. I have all of those points that I would like to graph on my graph paper. 
So let's see if we can do that. So I'm going to grab some graph paper here. So here we go. Hopefully you can see that. So what do we have? We have negative 5, 2, negative 5, 2 here, negative 4, 1 here, negative 3, 0 here, negative 2, 1 there, negative 1, 2 there, 0, 3 here, and 1, 4 there. So you can see this thing follows that pattern. And there is the graph of g of x, which is the absolute value of x plus 3. So we can evaluate functions by plugging in numbers, plug them in parentheses, although here it was simple enough I didn't need to. When you square cube things, plugging in parentheses becomes extremely important. Um, and then so you do your graphs, and you see your analysis, and you can also plug in other things other than simple numbers, like we did c plus 5 earlier to determine the value of the function there. And that will end this lesson.